Hello and welcome to the Match Day Vlogs channel. Uh, we're here this evening to talk about VAR and how even those in the Premier League are saying it's ruining the game. The end is nigh for VAR. Scrap VAR. VAR has actually done nothing. None of them in all the time I remember football have made decisions and poor decisions to the level of what we're seeing with VAR. Now, we've all experienced emotions with VAR, but the big one for me and what I've really enjoyed watching my side play in a championship is the fact that the moment the referee points to the centre circle, you know it's a goal and nothing is going to change that. Therefore, fans can celebrate. And what happens when you're in the Premier League or any competition that has VAR, there's that slight bit of you inside that knows this might be overturned. It's horrible. I mean, the amount of goals that went in last season that we celebrated like crazy, but there was still that little feeling that you're going to see that purple screen pop up and wreck your day. And it's, it's not right. The only fan that benefits from VAR is the neutral fan because they get excitement both ways, you know, in terms of like, oh, goals been scored, or oh, it might not, or oh, what's going on, controversy, all that kind of stuff. But in Roy Keane's words... But they've had decisions, as we all know, we all discuss football. But why some go, go for you, some against. Why go on? If some go for you and some don't, what's the point in VAR? If you're going to have subjective decisions where some go for you and some don't, what's the point? We've had decisions at St Mary's where we've seen penalties being given against us and they're blatantly not penalties. We've seen goals being scored where the player's not offside but he's been flagged offside and you just kind of go, ah oh, well. I mean, it's, it's annoying, but you still, you still just accept it because some go for you and some don't. Over the course of the season, it kind of even out. And until it's automated enough for offsides where effectively the ball is played and it's offside, and a vibration goes off on the referee's wrist to say he's offside, then just get rid of it. And in case there's been serious foul play, like someone's been murdered on the pitch of play, like this Dan did. Arguably the first use of VAR, though. I'm making a video about VAR. Oh, yeah. Can I have your thoughts? I mean, we, we've seen quite a few controversies. I mean, the big one being the, uh, the Coventry uh, FA Cup semi-final, which uh, basically broke the hearts of, uh, I think, every single neutral fan in the land. There's a lot of calls this week to get rid of it. The Swedish League have kicked it out. What do you reckon? Can happen? I mean, I love this season without it. The fact that it's just that whatever decision at the time is, that's the time and we just get on with it. And I think every team agrees that over the course of the season, it evens itself out. It does, it, it just does. takes away those amazing moments because uh, that Coventry goal it was onside yeah. that, that's a decision made because somebody's got a size 11 and the defender's got a size 10 foot yeah. and then if you think was it this time last season they were counting the shoulders and the arms of the players so you either got it's, it's just stupid mate the, the, the people who make the rules don't know about, enough about the game <laughs> the people who enforce it aren't, aren't good enough at their job so you might as well just have that human error right there or right then rather than that, them still make that human error but there'd be no excuse for it yeah. Exactly. And like you say, you know, some go for you, some go against you. But over the course of the season, they do iron themselves out. And if it's a case of some go for you, some go against you, then what's the point of it? What is the point of it? I mean, we've had so many celebrations there that have been fantastic this season because we know it's given. Because the moment the referee points to that centre spot, you know your team has scored a goal. Nothing's going to change it. I mean, that, that Flynn Downs one could have been ruled off for a handball. But we knew the goal's been given. It's given, given on. But I also think... Especially like for Coventry the other week. How many times have Coventry had to play with VAR and involved in the game? Yeah. And then you do have to think completely differently when you're in that time. Even in these games in the championship, you think, right, I might be able to gain that, uh, that yard. Or as a defender, you think I could put in that tackle a little bit harder. This season has been so much fun for everything minus these last few games. 
One is the, a little bit, but the, the no VAR and just dealing with the rubbish decisions as they come at you have been so much better. I, I genuinely think VAR is making our officials worse oh, yeah. because they're, they're literally relying that someone else will cover that. Yeah, they're, they're relying on everything. Listen, there are great advantages. There are things like goal line technology. That's great. Yeah. I mean, th th it's instant. It is instant. You know what's going on. That, that's, that is perfectly what, what you need. But apart from that, like you don't need anything else. I mean, I, I go as far as say basically scrap VAR until you have the point where the moment the ball is played and the, the attacker picks it up, a vibration goes off the referee's wristwatch to tell him it's offside. Is that level of technology you need to make it work? Like you have a goal line technology, but there we go. Thanks for that. Anytime. Back to the studio. That's it. I think I've said enough. I've said enough. It's a joke. We've gone about var this, var that. Help the officials out. Clearly they need help. It's all Charlie Austin's fault, isn't it? Well, there it is. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section and uh, we'll leave it there, shall we? All right. See ya.